All right, Shalom. I'm going to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakurash. Yahweh is the true, holy, and powerful name of the Heavenly Father, Bahasham, meaning in the name Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, and powerful name of His only begotten Son, who is the Savior of the nation of Israel, starting off with the elect within the nation of Israel. Israel consists of you so called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, as well as your Israelite foreigners scattered abroad that may look like the nations where you've been scattered to, but our Israelites. And I also want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well, peace and salutations to the hope of the elect, pushing out this word in all sincerity and in truth. All right, this is the brother you call from the GMS branch on the moon. Now you will come back at you with another lesson inspired by the Holy Spirit, Harakakurash. And, um, Lord, well, I want to entitle this lesson, um, Lay It to the Side. All right, lay it to the side and whatever it is for you. All right, um, uh, putting it off to the side. All right, to grow in the spirit. All right, to uh, obtain salvation, to draw nigh unto Yah Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right, because uh, as we walk in this uh, this walk of faith, this journey to salvation, all right, we have to recognize that there's things that we're gonna have to uh, give up, things that we're gonna have to cut off, things that we have to make sure that are uh, completely on the altar, meaning being willing to uh, to sacrifice it. All right, to uh, show forth our love and dedication to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right, and um, and to obtain salvation uh, ultimately, man. Now, I want to start off with the scripture in the book of Hebrews, the 12th chapter. The Lord's will this lesson be edifying. All right, um, Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1, it says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with, such, with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. All right, so looking at this in the literal sense, if you're running a weight, running a race, all right, and you're carrying weights, all right, you got a weight vest on, all right, you're trying to pull different things with you as you're running your race, those are things that are only going to slow you down, all right, and those are things that if we continue to try and hold on to those things, right, as we're running that race, it can have us to where we don't actually get through the finish line, all right, because of trying to carry on certain things or whatever the case may be. So it says that what well, we have to lay aside these weights, man. All right, and these different weights, okay, um, we may have attachments to them. All right, we may have a, a, a certain amount of love for these things, man. These weights can be anything. All right, that it for you, all right, that you have to lay aside could be anything, man. It could be uh, family, all right, it could be hobbies, all right, it could be certain lusts and desires, whatever it may be. We have to have the mindset of having that on the altar, man, because um, one thing I want to um, uh, uh, speak on is how the Lord is a jealous power, man. All right. The Lord is a jealous power. So if he feels that there's anything that's being put before him. All right. If we're men of the Lord, the Lord will uh, can cause us to go through different calamities or right, to remove those things from us. All right. You could be in a position to where you're so into your woman to where it's distracting you from the ministry or, or giving you your attention to doing the work and so on and so forth. The Lord can have it to where he allows the spirit to, to be on your woman for her to bug out and leave just the Lord to get your attention. All right. For him to bring you closer to him to cry out more to him all right to where that's not even an issue anymore man all right but if we have the mind to put these things to the side already man hey the lord is uh um uh, uh is delighted in that man and it'll get us closer to him without having to go through certain particular things man all right but let me read that again all right hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1 wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us all right, and to beset something means it's surrounding it. All right, so there's sin all around us, man. There's sin, wickedness all around us, man, that can throw us off a course. Not only sin, all right, but even things that are lawful for us to do. All right, things that we have within our liberty as being Israelites, all right, uh, that we can find in the scriptures that we have liberty to do, but it may not be expedient. So certain things maybe have to be cut off, may have to be cut off for a time period, for a season. All right, sometimes the Lord just wants to see if we're willing to cut those things off and we'll have it to where those things might not have to be cut off, man. All right. So, you know, the Lord deals how the Lord deals, man. But the the, the what the Lord wants from us is our focus and our heart and our mind to be on him. As we're going to grab Lord's will, you know, we've been bringing it out in the last, uh, uh, well, Saturday. You know, we brought it out in the lesson uh, Saturday morning, then on the line. It was pretty much the main topic is uh, given... Uh, making sacrifices for Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah. That's giving up things that uh, uh, you may desire or you may want. All right, for uh, a greater thing, for a greater purpose, or for another another thing, man. So we have to give up the things of this world. 
all right um put those things to the side so that we can obtain something greater which is the kingdom of heaven now i want to go into that word uh i want to go into that word um or that phrase that i say so easily beset and give me a second just to pull it up all right so uh death so easily beset now when you look it up in the blue letter it says skillfully surrounding besetting now when you drop down to the strong's definition it says uh uh well standing around i.e a competitor thwarting a racer in every direction figuratively of sin and genitive case which does so easily beset us but the key thing it says it says a uh, well standing around a competitor thwarting a racer so I decided to look up that word thwarting and then it brought up thwart it says to foil and then it says uh prevent someone from accomplishing something so we have to ask ourselves what are things that may be in our path that could be preventing us from accomplishing something man and what are we trying to uh, ultimately obtain is salvation so we have to really examine ourselves and see what things may be hindering me from uh getting salvation or what things could be slowing me down all right just to ensure our salvation because in the book of Ephesians, all right, in the book of Ephesians, as it says, uh, let me grab it real quick. It's the last chapter, if I'm not mistaken. Ephesians chapter six and verse uh, 13, it says, I'm gonna start at verse 12, it says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And that's what we're really battling, man. This is spiritual a spiritual battle within ourselves, man. Our right, battling the lust, the flesh, the desires, all right? All these things, man, that's trying to pull us here, pull us there. It's a constant pulling that's being done upon our flesh to take us away from our focus being on Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, all right? You might have your job trying to pull you here, trying to stretch you in that direction. You might have your woman trying to stretch you in this direction. You might have family members trying to stretch you to be this person or that person. All right. You might have all these things that's trying to stretch you, man. All right. But as being servants of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, our focus has to be on the Lord, man. All right. That's our primary goal is to please him. The Lord has called us to be soldiers, to please him. You know, as it is written in the book of Timothy, if I'm not mistaken, man. All right. So it says, no man that worth can entangle himself with the affairs of this life. So even though all these different things are trying to pull us in these different directions, we have to stay grabbing in this faith. We have to continue to walk this good path, man. All right. We don't want to get caught up in trying to, all right, trying to uh, um, please this person or stretch ourselves here and stretch ourselves there and trying to do that and trying to do this, you know. And then it seems like we're we're stretching ourselves so far. But then when it comes down to stretching ourselves for the Lord, we don't have that same energy. All right. Because we're weighed down by the pressures of all these other things that we're attached to. All right, now, if we have this wisdom, all right, this wisdom will keep us from the compassion of those things that we actually uh, desire and love, man, all right, that we actually care about. You might care about your family, all right, but this wisdom will have us to be able to detach, detach ourselves, all right, from the desires of those things or pleasing these people to make sure that we're doing what's pleasing in the sight of the Lord. And just to back that up with a scripture, because it says that in the book of uh, um, Wisdom of Solomon, all right, how wisdom pretty much kept Abraham from his compassion of his son, all right, to be able to sacrifice him, man. So there's things that we care about that we uh, enjoy, like I listed, hobby, whatever the case may be, all right. But through this wisdom, all right, and the Holy Spirit, the discipline that the Lord uh, uh, grants us, all right, it can separate us from being so compassionate for those things so that we can do what's important first and foremost to the Lord. And then those other things come in line, man. But this is wisdom of Solomon chapter 10 and verse 5. All right, it says, moreover, the nations and their wicked conspiracy being confounded, she found out the righteous and preserved him blameless unto the Most High and kept him strong against his tender compassion toward his son. Now, this is talking about Abraham. All right. Now, we know the story of Abraham. As I mentioned that I may get it, get it if the spirit, you know, has it or has it not. You know, you can go back and read it if I don't go into it. But um, uh, uh, Abraham had was told to sacrifice his son, man, his son whom he loved. And the Lord was only trying him to see if he was willing to do that. All right. And it said that when he was uh when he showed forth that he was willing to sacrifice Isaac, all right, he laid him down, strapped him up, brought the knife down, was finna bring it down on him and sacrifice him as the Lord commanded him. The angel stopped him. All right. And after he stopped him, he said, Now I know that thou fears me. So all Abraham had to truly do was show forth that he was willing to sacrifice that. But it was this wisdom 
and the Holy Spirit that worked in them or worked in them to be willing to put his compassion and the love, the, the great love that he had for his son to put to put that to the side. All right. All right. Uh, uh, to do what the Lord had commanded him to do. So it didn't mean that Abraham didn't love Isaac. Of course he did, man. It said he was his only begotten son and he had uh, Ishmael at that time, man. All right. But this is the son of the promise that he loved the most. But it was this wisdom, all right, that's, that uh, kept him all right, from being overly compassionate for Isaac to do what the Lord commanded him. So the same thing with us, man. You might be compassionate about uh, your family. You might be compassionate about your woman. You might be compassionate about whatever the case may be, whatever it is for you. All right. But through this wisdom, the Lord can strengthen your spirit to be able to to um, have that completely on the altar, man. All right. There's certain things that we know in our spirit, man, it may be tough to to put on that altar, man. All right. Or when it comes down to where it's about to be sacrificed, that we 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 feel that that feeling in us, that shakiness, like man, I'm I'm actually lose this, man. But through this wisdom, we know that we're gonna obtain everything, uh, uh, anyways, man. We'll get all those things back. So that's why it's important for us to rest in these scriptures, man, because this gives us hope, and we know the latter end of it, man. All right. So let me go back to uh this Ephesians uh, chapter six and verse uh. 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, man. And a lot of these different things that, once again, like I mentioned, that I'm um, trying to pull us, man, it's all, all it is, is trying to distract us, man. All right. And, it, and it'd be the smallest things, man. All right. The smallest things, man. You might be reading somebody hitting you up, trying to distract you. All right. You might be doing this and that and the third, but it's different things trying to distract you. All right. Trying to keep you uh, away from the Lord trying to stop you from listening to that lesson, trying to stop you from feeding your spirit, trying to stop you from growing in the faith, all right? Trying to uh, uh, make you put more energy into other things, all right? And and, and put less energy into you. How about Shimei Awashah? These are all distractions, but these are the things that we know, all right? Uh, the conditions of the battle, man. All right, we know what it is, man. We know that we're dealing with spiritual uh, wickedness in high places, man, you know? So we, hey, we got to know that this is a part of it and we got to recognize those things like, all right, nah. Like that's Satan, man. He trying to he trying to distract me from doing this, or he trying to keep me from watching this lesson. He trying to keep me from reading. He trying to keep me from praying. All right, because of these these things are that are these are things that are essential to make sure that we're closely connected with Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah continually at all times, man. But but uh, you will notice that if you start losing those battles more and more and more, you feel more of a disconnect to Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah. All right. When that shorty may she may text you and hit you up while you were reading, the next thing you know, you caught up in a conversation with her and your attention ain't on the scriptures, man. All right. And the next thing you know, you continue in that pattern. All right. Then you ain't really uh gaining understanding when you read. All right. And this is speaking from experience, man. This ain't no high and mighty, this and that and the third. These are battles that I've had to fight through and 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 lost at times and 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 strung in W's, man. All right, this is the condition of the battle. All right. Different things, obligations that you may have, man, uh, whatever the case may be, man, different things happen. All right. But it's all trying to separate us from Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shah. And the more that we lose those battles, all right, the more that we get more disconnected from Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shah. But the more that we win those battles, the closer that we get, the stronger we get in the spirit, the more confidence we have in Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shah, the more faith that grows in us, man. But it takes willing to sacrifice those things, man. All right. Sacrifice our time and our energy, whatever the case may be, man. All right, we have to show forth the Lord that we truly love him, man. And in, uh, in the book of Wisdom of Solomon, all right, uh, King Solomon talked about how he preferred, preferred this wisdom more than health, more than beauty, more than riches, right? So when we're presented with these different temptations throughout our everyday life, all right, to lean into the spirit all right, or to give in to the flesh, not saying that we aren't going to uh, uh, feed the flesh to the degree we are in this temple. So it's not like you aren't going to eat. It's not like you aren't going to let your hair down. You might have a, a drink, you know. Or this and that and the third, all right, we ain't some some monks, all right? Nah, but we have to have the temperance, all right? We have to have the uh, uh, the balance in the spirit to know when we're doing a little bit too much or knowing when we're doing too little, all right, to ensure that we're connected close to Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai continually, man. The last thing we want to find ourselves is in the position of martial law, hell, breaking out loose, man, and we feel a disconnect from Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai because of not uh, truly investing in the spirit, man, or, or been uh, in a path of just caving into the flesh too much. But it's all of the spirit of the Lord that's going to strengthen us to do these things. But I know I've been speaking a lot, so I want to go ahead and hit back to these scriptures. So lock you. All right, this is the book of Ephesians, chapter 6 and verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and against the rulers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. 
Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of the Mosah, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. All right, so we want to do everything that we can to stand in this time that we're about to enter into, man. Lord's will, I got a lesson on deck. If I have time, I might try and do it after this. But um, how we're about to enter into the storm, man. All right, we're about to enter into a storm of tribulation. All right, a storm of uh, chaos, calamity, right? But our mind has to stay uh, on Yahweh Bashami Awashah, and we have to know that the Lord is on that ship. All right. But anyways, um, we want to make sure that we're doing everything right now, investing in the spirit so that we can have a clear conscience and confidence that the Lord is going to be with us. All right. To where we, we can say like, nah, I made those sacrifices, man. I was being pulled here. I was being pulled there, but I fought to do what was pleasing unto you, Lord. All right. Lord, you've seen me. You've seen how I moved. You've seen how I thought, how I reasoned. All right. Even at times where we've, uh, where we've slipped. Lord, you saw where I slipped here, but I got back up. I tried not to offend again. I tried not to do no, no do that no more. You know, like we can sincerely, you know, have those testimonies. Like I, I made those sacrifices. Lord, you know how much I love this. You know how much I cared about that. And I denied that for you. All right. I did that so that I can get closer to you so that I could obtain salvation. See, when we do these things, man, it builds up our faith and confidence that we're truly servants of the Lord, man, that we're truly about this. So that when we come into those times, we know that the Lord is going to be with us, man. And he'll continue to show us that he's with us as we, as we continue to make these sacrifices for him, man. All right, so let me grab uh, the book of Proverbs, chapter 18. <clears throat> uh, Proverbs, chapter 18, and verse uh, and 1. It says, through desire, a man having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. All right, so it says through desire. Now, what is our desire or what should be our desire to the kingdom of heaven to please in Yahweh Hashem Yahweh right? That should be our desire, man. All right. So it says through desire, desire of the kingdom, right? Having separated himself. So that's a part of it, man. We desire the kingdom. So we have to separate ourselves. All right. So we may have to cut off certain things, man. That's why it says in the book of Matthew, it says it's better to go into the kingdom halted in Maine. All right. As a matter of fact, let me hit that real quick. All right, this is Matthew. Um, I had it written down anyways. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 18, or 18 and 8. Matthew uh, 18 and verse 8. Matthew 18 and 8, it says, Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt and maim, rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. So it's better to cut off certain things, all right, and ensure our position on that chariot, so to speak, man, or to ensure our salvation, having done all to stand, right? It's better to cut those things off rather, all right, than to try and hold on to those things, okay, and try and squeeze our way in. See, like, yeah, I can come in with this and I can, nah, man, all right? Because then find yourself not being able to make it, man, because of the attachment to these things in this world, man. You know, now this is ultimately going into how there, there's uh, actually members of the body all right, that may have to be uh, excommunicated, a little leaven, leaven, leaven at the whole lump. All right. Members that may uh, come to find out they aren't of us. They're actually niggas or wicked and they get separated. So it's better to cut them off. All right. Then uh, for then that to affect the rest of the body. You know, but uh, even applying into the different things that we may have attachment to, uh, attachments to in this world, man. All right. You know, it's things that are just weights that's hindering us. And you could still be moving forward, but you're moving forward so slow, you're dragging because you're so caught up in trying to carry that weight. And you're moving slow, dragging your feet, barely getting any distance, barely getting any growth in the spirit, right? You barely descend, you barely, a you just a little bit better than you were from the last year. All right, just a little bit better, just because we're trying to hold on to those things, man. Whereas it's like, you know what? I could, man, I could be running a whole lot faster, all right? Or I could have been moving, a, I could have had way more growth if I would have just cut that off, man. You know, and these are things that I ask myself. I'm like, man, what if I could cut, man, if I probably cut this off and cut that off, that may happen to where I'm flourishing the spirit a lot more, or maybe just reduce certain things, man. All right, I may have to reduce time and and uh, 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 participating in certain activities. All right, to make sure that I'm ensuring growth in the spirit, man. All right, I may have to cut off wh wh whatever it may be. I was, you know, throwing out different examples. Brothers may relate to it. Maybe uh, I may have to cut off from the drinking a little bit. 
All right, because I know, I know for a fact, if I cut this off just for this time period, man, I'll grow so much in the spirit. It's a thing that's lawful, but it may not be expedient. All right, it says all things are lawful, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful, but I will not be brought under the power of any. So there are certain things that are lawful that rule over us because we're subjecting ourselves unto it so much. All right. It could be drinking. It could be going out. It could be woman. It could be a hobby. It could be anything, man. Whatever that weight is for you, you know. So it's, you got to sit back and examine like, man, I, I really want to grow in the spirit. Sit back like, damn, what is it like that's hindering me, man? You know, what what things could it be that is slowing me down to where I know if I if I just reduce this or cut this out or show a little bit more discipline in this area or if I could do this and that in the third to where I know that it's going to assure me more growth in the spirit or get me closer to Yahweh Bashami Abashai, you know, whatever it may be, man. Hey, and you might not know what it is, but if, hey, pray into the Lord for these things and he'll reveal it unto us, man. All right. So it says, uh, that was it on that uh, Matthews and that Ephesians. So going back to Proverbs 18 and 1, through desire, a man having separated himself, seeketh the intermeddleth with all wisdom. So he's going to be engulfed in this word, man. All right. He's going to separate himself and engulf himself all right in this word man all right to to do what man to grow in this wisdom to get closer into your how about shimmy i was shy all right so let's see what else i got written down here um sirach 18 all right i got two more precepts uh sirach chapter 18 <clears throat> sirach 18 and uh 30 it says go not after thy lust but refrain thyself from thine appetites if thou givest thy soul the desires that please her, she will make thee a laughing stock to thine enemies that malign thee. That's right. So we have to be very uh, mindful of not giving ourselves over to our lust so so uh, easily or so often, man. We have to be balancing these things. Once again, there's things that are lawful that we have the ability to do, but we have to know that it's time and season, man. We have to know what's good for our own personal development, our own growth, all right, to make sure that we are uh, increasing in the spirit, man. So that And that takes having a real conversation with ourselves and being real, looking in the mirror like, I'm fucking up. I'm letting this is this is uh distracting me too much, man. You know, I just need to cut this out a, a, a some more, and it's it's gonna cause me to flourish in the spirit, man. All right. You know, there's things where to where it could cause you to be missing class because you want to go do this and you want to go do that. Sounds where brothers is linking up, but you so caught up and have your love and compassion for whatever this is or whatever that is. All right, is drawing you away from the Lord or from the brotherhood or whatever the case may be, man. All right, so we have to be mindful of these things, man. You know, because it's it's it, it, uh, having those patterns will accumulate over time to where we find ourselves disconnected from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. This is the main priority, man. Everything has to surround this word. All right, this wisdom and knowledge, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Once again, like I quoted earlier, he's a jealous power. So we have to show forth that we truly love him, and the way that Abraham showed forth that he truly loved the Lord, or the Lord acknowledged, like, now nah, I know you love me, I know that you fear me, is through what he was willing to sacrifice. So what are we willing to sacrifice, man? It should be everything. Everything should be on the altar. And like I said, this is easily said than done. All right. Then when it's actually on the altar and you finna come down and is 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 and it's finna be uh, cut off, you know. And, and it's at times, man. And I'll say from experience, man. There's certain things or relationships that I had to cut off. All right. And then years down the line, even in the faith, those things were restored unto me. But I had to cut it off first. You know, like, hey, well, it is what it is. And then years down the line, certain of those things were restored back unto me, but I had to cut it off at that time, man, you know, for, for me to grow and develop in the spirit, you know? So the same thing, brothers have these same different testimonies, man. All right, now I'm gonna jump down to Sirach 19 and five. Whoso taketh pleasure in wickedness shall be condemned, but he that resisteth pleasures crowneth his life, right? So being able to resist and have self-control, resisting those pleasures crowns our life, man. All right, this will get us to the kingdom. Bring us honor and glory in the eyes of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shad, man. All right, so this is uh, the last one, man. I want to grab through the spirit. This is the book of Sirach. Now, this is a, a heavy prayer, man. All right, this is uh, Sirach chapter 23. And um, I'm going to just start at the top. It says, O Lord, Father and Governor of all my whole life, lead me not to their counsels. Now, to the there that is speaking about when you read in the previous chapters, talking about the council of the tongue. All right. When you read up, it says, uh, uh, cause in the last verse, I'll just read it. Um, Sirach chapter, uh, 22 and 27, it says, who shall set a watch before my mouth and a seal of wisdom upon my lips that I fall not suddenly by them and that my tongue destroy me not. Right. Because it says life and death is in the power of the tongue. 
So we have to watch the things that we say, all right? The things that we utter out of our mouth, man, you know? So going into 23 and 1, O Lord, Father and Governor of all my whole life, lead me not to their counsels and let me not fall by them, right? Through the error of the tongue, whether that's speaking false philosophies, right? Whatever the case may be. But it says, verse 2, who will set scourges over my thoughts and the discipline of wisdom over my heart, right? So correcting our thoughts, man. Now, the scripture says in the book of, uh, it might be Wisdom of Solomon, it could also be in the book of Sirach, but it says how well wisdom will meet us in every thought, all right? So we want to make sure that as wisdom is meeting us in our thoughts, these precepts are coming into our mind, that we aren't neglecting that wisdom, all right? Because if we get in the habit of when those thoughts come into our mind, all right, and we're neglecting them, we're pushing it off to the side, where there's times where the, the spirit's like, hey, it's time, the spirit of alert, like, hey, hey, you know you need to read now. You know, you know, you need to put this off or whatever, move this way, move that way. If we continue to neglect those things, eventually it talks about in the book of wisdom of Solomon, the first chapter, how the Holy Spirit will flee a malicious soul, man, and will depart all right, uh, from thoughts that are without understanding and will not be uh, subject to the body that's subject unto sin, roughly paraphrasing the first chapter of wisdom of Solomon. All right. So uh, wisdom will not dwell in a body that's subject to sin. All right. So as wisdom is meeting us in our thoughts and we're neglecting it, all right. And pushing it off to the side, it'll come to the point where wisdom will stop meeting us, man. All right. The Holy Spirit will flee. All right. And then we'll be in a reprobate spirit, man. So this is a fearful thing, man. So it's not only just about making sure that uh we're doing these things because we only we know that it pleases the Lord, but we know that if we stop doing these things, that the Lord will will fuck us up, man, to <laughs> to be playing, man. You know, so it's a fearful thing, man. It's a fearful thing. All right, we, we want to make sure that we're continuing continually uh, uh uh taking heed man all right to ourselves as the scripture says but let me keep reading it says um uh who will set scourges over my thoughts meaning correcting his thoughts right and the discipline of wisdom over my heart that they spare me not for mine ignorances and it pass not by my sins meaning that he wants to constantly be corrected in his heart so that he doesn't commit sin that he doesn't uh, uh offend all right it says verse uh, three less mine ignorances increase so if these things don't happen all right, he'll increase in ignorance, all right, not knowing, okay, what to do, making bogus decisions, right? Lest my ignorances increase and my sins abound to my destruction. And it continues to build up. And then next thing you know, it, it leads into destruction. It says, uh, and I fall before mine adversaries and mine enemy rejoice over me, whose hope is far from thy mercy. And this is really the point, uh, these next couple of verses. O Lord, Father and power of my life, give me not a proud look. But turn away from thy servants, always a haughty mind. Turn away from me vain hopes and concupiscence, and thou shalt hold him up that is desirous always to serve thee. Let not the greediness of the belly, nor lust of the flesh take hold of me, and give not over me thy servant into an impudent mind. So he's begging and asking the Lord, like, Lord, don't give me over to my lust. All right, don't give me over to my carnal desires. All right, let me be spiritually minded, not carnally minded, all right? So this is things that we should be praying for as well, man, all right? That we aren't giving over to these different carnal desires and lust and uh, uh, compassion for this and then the third, man, all right? So that we can uh, please Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, man. And once again, all those things, man, will be given unto us, man. The Lord will give us the desires of our heart, all right? As it is written, man, if we commit unto him, all right, he will bring it to pass. But right now we're on a mission, man, and the Lord wants to see a sacrifice. He wants to uh, know that we love him, and we have to show that through what we're willing to sacrifice for him, man, whether it be time, energy, whatever the case may be, man. All right? So, Lord, what I was edifying, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakwadash, the honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well, peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, pushing out this word in all sincerity and the truth. With that, I'm going to say Shalom.